Thank you for joining me. This is Mary Yanez, and I am the director of the Senior Adult Program, and this is Mature Living. And as you know, we love to bring families information about services, about, about um, programs that help people in our community. And in particular today, we want to talk about persons with disabilities. And at the end, we want you to make a commitment to join the effort to support persons with disabilities, and we're gonna tell you how you can do that. And so I'd like to introduce our guest today. Uh, we have Mark uh, and Dolores Salazar, and uh, Mark is gonna introduce his sister here in a minute. We also have invited Nicole Coleman. Nicole, you're here also representing your brother, Nathan, as well. So let's just begin with Mark. Mark, tell me a little bit about, about your plight and why you joined uh, in, in being a support person for persons with disabilities. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a retired teacher and a, a family member of a person with disability who's my sister, Dolores Salazar. Hi, Dolores, we, mm -hmm. we see you here, mm -hmm. and I see you're uh, actively listening today. <laughs> Dolores is my little sister. She has cerebral palsy uh, since birth and it's affected her physically so that you know she doesn't have her motor control but mentally she's she's uh, always been very well and uh, she's even uh, has her uh, uh, degree bachelor's of social work from U university of texas at el paso and she's a licensed social worker but uh, she hasn't worked for pay but as a volunteer She's been involved in many, many uh, organizations for, uh, that support people with disabilities. So she's an advocate. She's an advocate. Absolutely, uh, and, and we I've need joined advocates. Her. I've You've joined, joined her. You've joined her. I've joined her, <laughs> yes. and uh, we've been working as partners for uh, since she graduated uh, wow. in the 1980s. That's amazing, mm -hmm. and welcome. Oh, welcome, Dolores Salazar, uh, to our set and to our Mature Living. And I know this is not the first time you all have been here on Mature Living, and we're glad you're still at it, right? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and so now I'd like to uh, introduce you to M Nicole Coleman. And Nicole, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm Nicole Coleman, and um, I've had a disability since birth as well. And I'm involved in uh, various organizations that deals with people with disabilities. And the reason I've um, been involved in these organizations is because since I was little, my parents have uh, instilled me the importance of advocacy and standing up for myself and for others. Very good. And I understand you have a twin brother. And later on, we're going to give his number so that people can call him. <laughs> <laughs> Right, mm -hmm. and uh, make sure that uh, they have a contact information. Nathan, tell me about Nathan. Well, Nathan, he's- uh, Your twin brother? My twin brother, and he's also a big advocate of, you know, helping others become a better version of themselves. And he's in the process of uh, developing a coalition for uh, youth with disabilities. A coalition yes. for, for youth with disabilities. Uh, you know, and w we have to acknowledge young people, young people um, to get involved in their own future, right? In their own future, right, mm -hmm. right. And, and Dolores agrees with me. So let's get started. I think what I'd like to do is ask um, Nicole about CD the CDS option, which really stands for Consumer Directed Services Option. And, and I guess to begin, I've heard that the monies, the funding follows the consumer. The services and the funding follows the consumer wherever they desire to go. Is that a good kind of description about, about CDS? Yes, and the CDS option is a great um, opportunity for us to be able to still be in the community and not, not be in, in nursing homes or facilities. Hmm. And we take control of our services. Very good, so you are involved in your, in your own independence and independence means living where you choose, whether it's at home with family 
or independently in your own apartments, in your own uh, homes. And so tell, tell me about, is that a Texas waiver program? Yes. Well, there's several Texas waiver programs. I see. Like class um, and the blind and deaf uh, multiple disabilities oh. are, are a few of the different um, waiver programs that are available. Yes. But you could call the 211 number and they can direct you to the different types of waiver programs that are available. Yes, and you have a title. You're a peer support specialist with Project Amistad. Am I correct on that? Yes. And what is it that you do with, with as, your, uh, in your job? As a peer support specialist, I help uh, individuals that are in group homes or in this, the state facility and help them uh, maintain their independence within the facilities in hopes that they can one day live on their own. Very good. Uh, and I'll also uh, have some little notes that you provided for me, and thank you for, <laughs> for guiding me with this mm -hmm. interview. I really appreciate your work, uh, Nicole, with this. Um, so instead of living institutionalized, in, you can also have the choice of getting case management, uh, support services, um, and, and, and financial management. Tell me a little bit about those services. Well, um, with the CDS option, you have the your social worker that helps you okay. manage those uh, services. And then with your case manager also helps you um, find um, an agency that will take care of all the financials and taxes. Very so good. You don't feel overwhelmed with all that. That's good, because we we want to take care of their well-being, and not worry about so many other things like like we do, um, and they're necessary. Be able to manage their disability check, buy what you need, choose to spend where you need to spend, and make sure you're secure financially, and of course in in the home. And so, how do you register? A, can we register with 211 for these programs? Yes. The 211 number will, will direct you on how to register for these waiver programs. Okay. And is there a Medicaid waiver program as well? And, and there's a number that I have here that I'd like to give as well, the Medicaid wa waiver program. Yes. What is that about? Do you, do you know? Well, with that number, uh, you you tell them that you want to register for the waiver program and the waiver program the wait sorry the waiting list for the waiver programs is usually uh, seven to ten years oh my and, gosh and once you're off the waiting list that's when they do an assessment to see what what services you qualify for I see and so we do want to give that number it's one eight seven seven. 438-5658, and we'll put that on the screen for everybody to on that Medicaid waiver program. So later on, we're going to talk about the children's disabilities information, but I'd like to go now to Mark. Tell me about your advocacy, Mark, and what you're doing. Well, you, um, I'm, I'm a, a personal care attendant for my sister. You know, I, you know I've been a, a family member, you know, ever since you know, I've had my family, and and Del and uh, Dolores was in my family, so you know, I've been, I I grew up uh, taking care of her, but uh, when the class program came about in the 1990s, uh, Dolores was able to uh, get off the waiting list and enroll in this in this class program, which is a Medicaid waiver program. It's one of those Medicaid waiver programs and it's under the CDS option where she is the boss. She directs her services. So she's my boss okay. and, I, and I'm, I'm her attendant. So, you know, I, 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 uh, I help her with all her physical needs, but uh, also the, the, you know, the beautiful thing is uh, that we've been involved in this, in doing advocacy for people with disabilities. So 
So we've uh, uh, participated in our organizations in, in Volar, in Grupo mm -hmm. Dignidad, Igualdad, Oportunidad, Dio. and uh, and statewide uh, the uh, Coalition for Texans with Disabilities. We we were members for 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 about 12 years on that board of directors. So we went all over the state of Texas. Um, uh, working with that uh, organization also that works directly with the legislature to uh, uh, help with services and needs of people with disabilities. Very good. So as an, as an attendant, you know, um, uh, <coughs> uh, we do advocacy and uh, we, we uh, uh, try to help uh, uh, educate through our Grupo Dio, which w where we speak in Spanish, we have our meetings in Spanish, we try to reach out to the Hispanic community yes. so that they can be informed about the services and programs in the community. Yes. And it's one of our proudest, proudest moments to see that when people are able to uh, come here with, with nothing, with no services and no knowledge of the programs, that uh, they're able to hook up with Very something. Good. That is so good. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple of minutes left, so I do want to mention some of the programs that you wanted us to mention, and that is the Children's Disabilities Information Coalition. It's a nonprofit group. We'll probably list a phone number for that. Uh, we wanted to mention the Autism Society, right? The, uh, uh, of El Paso, another nonprofit. The Paso del Norte Children's Development Center. And of course, uh, we mentioned Volar and P PACT and, and, and all, all of those. But I also want to ask you, what do you want from our audience? How can we help? Well, what, what, what we're asking from the audience is be, be aware of what services and programs that, that are available for people with disabilities and not be afraid to uh, ask questions if they have any. Very good. I see a pin. And Dolores, and it's R E check mark up. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Uh, rev up, R E V up. Rev uh, up means uh, register to vote, educate yourself about the candidates and the issues, and be sure and vote because your vote counts. And we need people with disabilities and their families and their friends and uh, everybody to turn out and vote. Absolutely, mm -hmm. especially when there's issues and mm -hmm. referendums and addendums and, and services and, and where we need to vote, right, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Nicole and Dolores? These programs depend on funding, and the funding comes from the legislature many times. So the funding for attendance, for uh, attendance for their salaries, for their benefits, you know, those are some things that, you know, we, we need uh, more of. The programs, the waiting list, you mentioned that it's a long time. Yes. But it's only going to be cut if more people get involved and Good. talk to their legislators. Well, our viewers, I'm sure, are going to be right there joining your effort, joining mm -hmm. your effort to support persons with disabilities. One last thing that you may have on your mind, uh, Nicole? Anything you might have missed uh, mentioning that you'd like to mention? Well, there's sitting. Um, this CIDIC is where we help uh, youth know what they're going to do after high school, that there's more after high school and that they can advocate for themselves and be more independent. Yes, and the CIDIC is the Children's Disabilities Information Coalition, yes. and that's a nonprofit and we want to make sure that, that young people get involved with their future and their decisions. And, and, and their livelihood and everything else. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I hope it wasn't uh, too hard for Nicole and for <laughs> Dolores. <laughs> Thank <laughs> and, you. And Thank for you. Mark and I. So Thank I you. think we did a good job. And we want to hear more about you as you go through the media, you go to television stations, you go to the radio, and you make sure you get that word out. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love Thank that. You. Register, educate, and vote. vote. Mm -hmm. Very good. And we'll be back uh, with more guests here on Mature Living. Hello, I'm Mary Yanez, director of the Senior Adult Program and your host for Mature Living. You know, this show has been ongoing for over 30 years. And so we want you to watch. Of course, we come on EPCC TV throughout the week. On Sundays, we're on KCOS at 
Public Channel 13. And so we also want to remind you that we are on YouTube. Just visit EPCC TV on YouTube and you'll be able to see many of our shows and interviews that we've run over the year. See you then. Do you worry about how much someone drinks? Do you feel neglected or unloved? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you are not alone. al and Alateen can help. Call one 200 223 or visit al slash help. We want to continue our beautiful show that we have uh, prepared for you uh, with a community partner. A uh, community partner that will be there, has been there since 1964, but then, but then continuing into 2000s and 2022 and 2023 and 2024. And that is a Chamisal National Memorial. And so we've invited our good friend, uh, Gina Hernandez, who's a park ranger uh, there to kind of give us an update as to how we're doing and how we're opening slowly and the activities that are ongoing right now. So let's get started. There's so much to talk about already. Um, and we've all experienced pre-pandemic, experiencing pandemic, and slowly moving into opening up at 100%. So tell me a little bit about what you're doing there at the park. Great, Gina. thank you, Mary. <laughs> it's good to, good to be here again. So the, the park is open. Our visitor center is open. The grounds are open. Uh, our gallery, our art gallery, Franklin, Franklin G. Smith Gallery is open again. Um, what we still aren't doing quite yet are the theater events and the big outdoor performances. Um, but we are doing a lot of work in the meantime. We're working on collaborations with different groups. And uh, one of those ended up in uh, actually a big event that made us, the staff there, feel like, yes, we're, oh. we're, we're getting back. That's good, <laughs> that's good. And, and you know, we've heard a lot about the, um, the Benito Juarez and we've seen on television that, that statue rolling, you know, where it's being moved somewhere, is going somewhere. Tell us a little bit about, about that project. Yeah. Yes, so on September 25th, Sunday, uh, we had the dedication of the statue. The statue is a donation from the 12 Travelers Memorial of the Southwest. And they, of course, have been building the, the statues, um, the 12 Travelers themselves, starting with the equestrian. Their fourth statue was identified to be Benito Juarez. And the place to, uh, that they identified to put it um, in collaboration with the park was at Chamisal National Memorial. We'll and get that, to see it there. Yes, it is there. It will be there in perpetuity. The, the oh. Park Service will be caring for it there and uh, using it to help tell that history that we share. That's right. So, it is so good. And also, you know, it's interesting that Ciudad Juarez and the Chamisal, Parque Chamisal, there's a, a statue over there. Yes, yeah, so not too far outside of, of Parque Chamisal, but in Ciudad Juarez in 1964, they installed a statue of Abraham Lincoln. And that statue, of course, is, is there is looking north. Uh, the statue of Benito Juarez now is installed in, Parque Ch in, in Chamisal National Memorial looking south. And so they're, they're facing each other. And this statue is a complement to that one. And it's many years in the making, so. <laughs> We're thankful to 12 Travelers uh, for realizing those plans that the, uh, you know, this community that was involved in the Chamisal Treaty and the plans for these border areas at that time had envisioned. And we get to enjoy to share with our young people, our students, uh, to carry on the story of the Chamisal uh, Treaty. Tell me just a little bit about that so that our viewers that maybe do not know how, that there's a Parque Chamisal in Ciudad Juarez and there's a Chamisal National Memorial in El Paso, about that. Yeah, there are a few different places with that name, Chamisal. Um, the two, these two parks, Parque Chamisal and Chamisal National Memorial, <coughs> both commemorate the 1963 Chamisal Treaty. And that treaty was the complete solution to a century-long boundary dispute in this small section between Ciudad Juarez and uh, El Paso. And uh, it's a, a long history, kind of a complicated history. It's an, a fascinating history. And the, the thing that was really worth commemorating was how in the middle of the, the Cold War with a lot of tensions, 
this long dispute that was just, uh, as President Johnson said, a, a thorn in the flesh of, of, of our negotiations, of our, our relationship between the two countries. This group of people, this, the um, governments at that time could come together and negotiate through diplomacy, mutual respect, goodwill, friendship, and find a solution that was difficult, not without hardship, you know, families having to be re relocated. That's right. And there's still some families in El Paso that remember that they were uh, relocated. Absolutely. So that uh, we could, you know, make that happen. Yes, and we've, you know, we've had uh, different times members of those families come in and, and um, share their experience, and of course it would be unique to the family, but, uh, you know, they recall at that time it was hard. It was hard for our family, but some of them, you know, look back and say, we're so proud to be part of that solution that was good for the community and good for the two countries. And so peacefully. Yes. And that was, that's the beauty of that. Yes. And so, you know, the the complimentary the compliment of the Abraham Lincoln looking north and and Benito Juarez now looking south is so beautiful that is, that that, is, that story has to be told and so um, there's also um, another thing that you wanted to talk about and and that is the the coordinated uh, uh, activities that are happening with uh, the United States uh, the uh, the um, consulate. Of Ciudad Juarez. Right, so uh, you know during this time I mentioned that we were, were working on kind of our, our partnerships, our relationships, so one of those was of course with 12 Travelers and the and the statue, but another thing that we've recently um, started or opened is the Franklin G. Smith Gallery, the art gallery, and we have an exhibit in there right now that was uh, coordinated, uh, funded uh, at least partially through the U.S. Consulate in Ciudad Juarez, and it's an exhibit that's partly in Chamisal National Memorial and partly in Parque Público El Chamisal in, in Juarez. And the exhibit is called La Línea Imaginaria. So it's an art exhibit that's on both sides of this boundary. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you know, in this artist's mind, she's calling it an imaginary line. So it makes us think about, well, what is this border? What is this boundary? Yes. And we share the same air, <laughs> the weather, we, sh we right. share everything. So it is an imaginary uh, line. And her name is Carla Garcia. Carla Garcia, and she is a native of Ciudad Juarez. Uh, she knows this area very well. She's currently based out of Dallas. This exhibit was, was brought from Dallas, but it's a really neat exhibit, sculptures of uh, cacti, and so it's all with with barro, with clay, and uh, oh. just really neat. It has some video components and photographic components, and and you'll just have to go to both parks to be able yes. to see the whole exhibit. <laughs> We're kind of at the end of Hispanic heritage, but there's something beautiful that you all worked on. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, uh, what you all did at Chamisal, this, this video that you, uh, we are Chamisal, right? Yes, we um, we had a neat collaborative project. We have some very skilled uh, photographers and videographers in the in the park. Uh, those who've worked in the theater for for years, and and so we um, made a, a little video that is in celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. But it's really about uh, this park and 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 what it's about. And it's a it's a national memorial. It's a living memorial, yes. and it's built of the the people who share the history, who live the history and share the, the culture and, and live the culture of this border area. And so it tells the, the story of a little boy who's discovering the park and and uh, he announces that he is Chamisal and we are all Chamisal. Is he a little so park ranger too? He <laughs> is a little park ranger. So it's, it's a pretty adorable video, we think, and uh, it's available on our website. We'd love for everyone to go look at it. And and maybe this is a good time to mention the website and also how they can see uh, the uh, Smith Gallery, you know, and visit that in person, of course. Yes. And, uh, and of course, tell us about uh, how they can contact you at the Chamisal, um, how they can view this, this. I'd like to see that. We are Chamisal. I'm going to have to go in there. What is the website? All right. So you just go to NPS, as in National Park Service, so NPS.gov 
<clears throat> forward slash chamisal. And that will take you to our homepage. That's right where the video is. And from there, you can get to our um, current, what's currently available in our gallery, but that is also at go.nps.gov forward slash Smith Gallery. Okay, super, all yep. in one word. I think we've covered everything. Is there something that I didn't um, cover, because we still have time uh, for you to share? Uh, the future, uh, we want to get back to semi-normal. Uh, we want theater, we want those beautiful events that you had outdoors. We have beautiful weather, beautiful park. It's, it's lovely the way it's been kept up. And um, those performances on the outdoor uh, amphitheater, I call it, you know. So tell us a little bit about, about what you expect. Yeah, we're, we're definitely still feeling the effects of the pandemic and, and a few other things. We've had some losses at our park of, of employees. So we've, we've gone through some rough times, but we are open and we are really excited. We're moving in, in a good direction. Everything right now at the park is beautiful. We've had this, uh, this big inauguration of the, the unveiling of the statue. Um, the park was green, you know, we'd had some rain, everything was green it and is. just looking really beautiful that day. And, and it still looks nice, very okay. nice. So uh, our maintenance staff is, is top notch. So they always have the park looking wonderful. But this time of year, of course, with good weather, you know, pack a lunch, pack up your, your kids' bikes, go and uh, take a, have a picnic. Um, walk the trails, the visitor center with mm -hmm. a still pretty new exhibit, museum exhibit is open every day of the week. Yes. So that's available. The art gallery is available, um, all of the outdoor space and, um, and our junior ranger program too. We haven't right. mentioned that in a little while. That's always available. You can uh, do the Chami junior ranger book and get a, a junior ranger badge. And when does that happen? Does it happen? throughout the year? That's always, so always. that's as long as the visitor center, our cultural center information desk is open, you can pick up the Junior Ranger book. So that's every day of the week between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Very good. And then we haven't given the, the phone number where people can find out more information. Um, if you have any questions, where can they call? They can call 915-532-7273. I hope we've covered everything, Gina, because we want to invite you back regularly as things open up would you come back and share oh, i would love to this is viewers. always a treat uh, very good well thank you for being with us and i guess we'll see you at the chamisal sounds great thank you we'll see you at the chamisal as well and then we'll see you all next week as well with more guests here on mature living